Hey, what's up YouTube? It's me, Andrew. Today I'm doing a quick comparison between the Dell XPS 13 and the Dell XPS 15. Both of these feature the latest Intel Haswell processors. Alright, let's get started. Alright, let me go ahead and break down the specs for the Dell XPS 13. This laptop features the 4th generation Intel Core i5-4200U running at 1.6 GHz, Intel HD 4400 for the graphics, 8 GB of RAM, 128 GB solid state drive, for the display, we have a 13.3 inch LED backlit touchscreen display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. For the operating system, we have Microsoft Windows 8.1, and the retail price of this laptop is $12.99. Next up, let me break down the specs for the Dell XPS 15. This laptop features a 4th generation Intel Core i5 4200H running at 2.8GHz, Intel HD 4600 for the graphics, 8GB of RAM, 500GB hard drive, plus a 32GB solid state drive. For the display, we have a 15.6 inch LED backlit touchscreen display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. For the operating system, we have Microsoft Windows 8.1, and the retail price of this laptop is $14.99. For this section, we're going to test out the boot up speed and see which one boots up first. On my left hand, we got the Dell XPS 15, which features a 500GB hard drive plus a 32GB solid state drive. On my right hand, we got the Dell XPS 13, which features a 128GB solid state drive. Alright, let's not waste any more time, let's get started with the boot up test. All right, here we go. Dell logo on the XPS 15 first, followed by the XPS 13. Uh-oh, look like the XPS 13 is pulling away. Yup, it won by just a second. On average, the boot up times for both of these laptops were around 13 to 15 seconds. Next up, let's do a size comparison between the XPS 15 and the XPS 13. Let's take a look at the dimensions and weight of these laptops. On the Dell XPS 13, the width is 12.4 inches, the depth is 8.1 inches, and for the height, at its thinnest point is 0.2 inches, and its thickest point is 0.7 inches. And when you configure it with a touchscreen panel, the weight comes in at 3.03 pounds. On the XPS 15, the width is 14.6 inches, and the depth is 10 inches. For the height, at its thinnest point is 0.3 inches, and its thickest point is 0.7 inches, and the weight comes in at 4.44 pounds. Next up, let's compare the ports between these two laptops. Let's start with the XPS 13. Here you got your mini display port, USB 3.0 port, and your power charge indicator light. Let's go to the 15 inch now. Here you got your Noble Lock, USB 2.0 port, USB 3.0 port, and an SD card reader. Let's take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Starting with the XPS 13, you got your AC charging port, USB 3.0 port, and your headset port. Let's take a look at the XPS 15 now. Here you got your AC charging port, HDMI output, mini display port, two USB 3.0 ports, a headset port, and your power charge indicator light. Just to recap, on the XPS 15 you gain an SD card reader, an HDMI output, USB 2.0 port, and a Noble lock. Next up let's compare the interior of these laptops. Both laptops feature a full size keyboard that is identical in size. The two major changes from the XPS 13 and the 15 is the trackpad is slightly larger on the XPS 15 and the coating they use on the palm rest. The XPS 13 features a magnesium palm rest with a soft touch paint, while the XPS 15 features a silicone palm rest. I personally prefer the silicone finish on the XPS 15. Next up, let's compare both displays side by side and see how they compare. Both laptops feature a full HD touchscreen panel with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. Let me launch the MSN homepage so we can compare the default page scaling. Images and text is a lot larger on the XPS 15. Let's scroll all the way down here and take a look. Let's compare this article here side by side and let's do a quick comparison. Let's go ahead and take a look at the text on the bottom. Yeah, it's much bigger. Alright, let's go ahead and do one more comparison between these two laptops. Let's go to NewYorkTimes.com. Again, the page automatically scales to the 15 inch. However, with multi-touch, you can pinch the zoom on the 13 inch without a problem. Let me demonstrate pinch the zoom on the 13 inch. Let's do it on the 15 inch as well. Both display panels have been a pleasure to look at. Colors are vivid, text and images are crisp. These are two of the best 1080p panels on the market, hands down. Next up, let's test out the performance of the Dell XPS 13. This laptop features the Intel Core i5-4200U running at 1.6 GHz with turbo boost up to 2.6 GHz. For the test, we're going to be using Geekbench 3 64-bit version. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the scores. For the single core score, I got 2,713 and a multi-core score came in at 5,097. Next up, let's take a look at the Dell XPS 15. This model features the Intel Core i5-4200H running at 2.8 GHz with a turbo boost up to 3.4 GHz. Let's take a look at the Geekbench results. For the single core score, I got 3,254 and the multi-core score came in at 6,773. 
Next up, let's test out the CPU performance by using Cinebench R15. For the Dell XPS 13, we got 225 CB. If you need better performance from the XPS 13, there is a dual core i7 4500U available. That model retails for $1649. Next up, let's take a look at the Dell XPS 15. The CPU scored 318 CB thanks to its faster dual core processor. For even better performance, you can select the high end XPS 15, which features an Intel Core i7 quad core processor. Next up, let's test out the CPU performance by exporting an 8 minute 1080p video clip using Handbrake. For this test, I'm going to use the default setting. And the results are in. The Dell XPS 13 took 10 minutes and 38 seconds to export this 1080p 8 minute video clip. What about the XPS 15? Well, the Dell XPS 15 completed the 8 minute 1080p export in about 5 minutes and 26 seconds. Which is impressive. The Intel Core i5 4200H is a fast dual core processor. Next up, let's test out the performance of the Intel HD 4400 on the Dell XPS 13. For the test, we're going to use 3D Mark. Alright, the results are in. For the Firestar 1.1, I got a score of 597. For Cloudgate 1.1, I got a score of 4,333. And iStorm 1.2, the score came in at 42,674. Next up, let's take a look at the Intel HD 4600 on the Dell XPS 15. The Intel HD4600 is a highly capable graphics card. It even matches the performance of some dedicated GPUs like the NVIDIA GT630M. Alright, let's take a look at the results. For Firestar 1.1, I got a score of 680. Cloudgate 1.1 came in at 5,352. And Icestorm 1.2 came in at 55,429. With the Intel HD4600, you can expect to play games like Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty Black Ops 2 on low setting. If you plan on playing more intensive games and editing videos full time, then I would recommend the high end XPS 15. The high end model features an NVIDIA GT 750M with 2GB of dedicated graphics and it starts at 1949. Next up, let's compare the internal differences between these two laptops. On the 15 inch, there are two fans opposed to one fan on the 13 inch. The XPS 15 also features a standard 2.5mm hard drive, 32GB M SATA SSD, and two DIMM slots for your RAM that is expandable to 32GB. When you compare that to the Dell XPS 13, the only item you can upgrade is the 128GB M SATA SSD. For those of you that want the flexibility of upgrading your laptop, then I would lean towards the Dell XPS 15. Next up, let's compare the speakers. On the 15 inch, there are two speakers that are facing down towards the front. On the 13 inch, the speakers are not visible. I believe they are under the keyboard. The speakers on the XPS 15 were awesome. The sound quality was crisp and clean. The sound quality on the XPS 13 was average when compared to the XPS 15. However, for an Ultrabook, the XPS 13 sound quality is good. Next up, let's test out the performance of the 128GB solid state drive on the 13 inch. For this particular test, I'm going to use Crystal Dismart. For the sequential read speed, I got 494.4 megabytes a second, and the write speed came in at 316.6 megabytes a second. Next up, we have the Dell XPS 15. This model features a 500GB 5400 RPM hard drive plus a 32GB M SATA SSD. Alright, let's see how this hard drive and SSD combo compares to the XPS 13. For the sequential read speed, I got 235.2 megabytes a second, and the sequential write speed came in at 68.14 megabytes a second. The Dell XPS 13 and its flash based storage proved that its read times are more than two times faster than the hard drive and SSD combo. And the write speeds on the XPS 13 destroyed the XPS 15. If you want the full SSD experience on the XPS 15, you will either have to upgrade the existing hard drive to an SSD or get the high-end model with the 512GB SSD. That model retails for $22.99. Next up, let's take a look at the average temperature you should expect during normal usage. On my XPS 13, the average temperature was around 54 degrees Celsius. Will the dual fans on XPS 15 help out the speedy CPU? Let's take a look. On average, the CPU temperatures were around 48 degrees Celsius. I would have to agree, the dual fans on XPS 15 kept this PC running efficiently. Next up, let's perform a heat stress test by running Cinebench R15 5 times back to back and let's see how well these laptops manage heat while put under pressure. After the heat stress test, the Dell XPS 13 averaged around 74 degrees Celsius. And the XPS 15 averaged around 81 degrees Celsius. Next up, let's compare battery performance between these two laptops. The XPS 13 features a 55 watt hour battery pack and the Dell XPS 15 features a 61 watt hour battery pack. On average, the Dell XPS 13 gave me around 6.5 to 8 hours of normal usage with screen brightness at around 80%. The Dell XPS 15 on average gave me around 5 to 6.5 hours with normal usage with screen brightness at around 80%. There is an optional 91 watt hour battery pack for the XPS 15, which Dell claims you can get up to 11 hours of battery life. Alright, this completes my comparison on the latest Dell XPS 13 and the Dell XPS 15. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. 
and please subscribe for more upcoming videos. Alright, thanks for watching. Peace.